Hi, it's Shobo from Just Go Places. So welcome to my channel. This part is also the really good options for food. Uh, you can expect to eat in and around Sofia. Sofia has lots of restaurants as well. Uh, and as you know, eating well is a considered a huge part of my vacation experience. Sofria has some pretty good options, and especially um, at the luxury resorts. The Mango Tree Restaurant at Stonefield Villa was uh, amazing. We went there twice. We liked it so much, and it has great views. Uh, for lunch, we had a fried fish burger, and I think a jerk chicken burger. And dinner, we had a uh, fresh fish. The restaurant at Sugar Sugar Beach. Uh, Viceroy was also really good. Um, you know, rum punch and chicken wings is what I remember, and I had a grand time. There are also other restaurants in the other uh, luxury hotels. The restaurant at Jade Mountain Resort is the only one that I know of where it's guests only. The you have to book into the Anne's Chastenay restaurant, which is the um, sister hotel. There are local restaurants too. You just have to keep a an eye out for where the locals are going. Our taxi driver took us to a shack in town that served jerk chicken that was amazing. And it was exact excellent good value for money. At Sofia Town Beach, we also found a little local food stand selling hot dogs and beer. And it was perfect for watching the sunset on the beach. In town, there is one dining experience that I would say is fine dining, but it's not fancy or pretentious. Orlando's is a chef-owned restaurant that is known throughout the island as one of the best restaurants in St. Lucia and has also been written up in a lot of magazines um, outside of St. Lucia. Be forewarned though, lots of locals hang out in front of Orlando's knowing they can get work. Lots of visitors come to Orlando and it's a location at the entrance of town makes it a obvious point for locals to make some money. The chef is British by birth and his name is Orlando. And he came to St. Lucia as um, the head chef for the Ladera restaurant. And he established his reputation there for a, a dozen years or so, and then he struck out a, on his own. So, but you've settled here for a while. For now, yeah. I mean, the, the funny thing actually, I mean, so the story is simple, you know. I like, um, I knew where I'd be in the Caribbean in my, in my career. I knew that the island was going to be. Do you know I was going to get here? But I m m moved to Birmingham. Then I worked around London and did a lot of London. And then I ended up coming to Miami for like three years. Loved Miami. I wish I was still there, but then I love Miami. Came back to London, did a little more stuff. Then I ended up going to Singapore for two years. Wow. So I helped, I helped to, to launch a very first Caribbean restaurant back in 96. Wow. So that was quite fun. And then we went to London. And then I met a manager of Bay Gardens Hotel um, in London. I was did a catering for her. And so I, I had my portfolio and said, you know, as a Caribbean chef, I'm wondering why isn't there more Caribbean cuisine in the Caribbean? Because every time I come to the Caribbean, I go to Jamaica a lot and Barbados, mm -hmm. and I never find sexy cuisine in Caribbean. Mm -hmm. So I'll tell you what, I just did Singapore. Why don't I come to St. Lucia? You, you, you give me free accommodation, and I'll teach your staff my vision. Mm -hmm. Of course, when I arrived there, mm -hmm. uh, when I arrived there, oh, they took me out for dinner and gave me salmon. So, so I said to myself, I'm on the right track because you, you take me out and give me salmon, obviously I can improve on that. <laughs> <laughs> so we did a two week stint there and everything else. And then I came to, across the Sioux for a day trip, went to Ladera and um, looked around, loved the view of Ladera. I said to the GM, you know, love your location, but if I were your chef, we'll do cooking classes, we'll, uh, we'll change all the directions, we'll do all the menus, we'll do all local things and everything else. I was just having a conversation like I'm talking to you guys. We met in London, didn't think nothing of it. September got a call, so listen, the chef's no longer there, would you consider coming back and be the consultant chef? So for like five, six years, I was doing six months here, six months back there, at a restaurant back in London. And then I decided, you know, I was in a relationship. It was quite challenging, but you know, worked it out. And the more I worked hard, the more they, they, they want to take me on as an executive chef. So that's the end of doing the taking the, the executive chef. So. We did that. Um, How long were you at Ladera? 13 years. 13 years as executive chef. Yeah. Wow. Too long. Then, Too long. When I, when I went to Ladera and I did everything on the back of my, my what I did, there was nothing in my contract saying about no compete. <laughs> but then when I left, 
they said, oh, you can't work within 1.5 miles of Ladera. And I was like, this is a bit disappointing. So, and, that's a, and because where Ladera is kind of high up, it, it does stretch a long way. <laughs> like, you know, there's certain areas. I mean, this is, is 1.6, I think, or 1.5. <laughs> That's but, why you're right on the edge of town. But, but, but yeah, that's right. <laughs> and so a- aerially, um, like Jade Mountain is in the 1.5 because of the, the viewpoints. Right. You know? Yes, yes, yes. But down and below, I'm just on the edge of town. So that's why I'm out in the sticks, you know. But sometimes in life, you know, what does faith do? Faith allows you to un- appreciate the opportunity. Um, if Ladera found me a fret with, with a knife bag and no, ex- and no building, that's a good thing. So that's why I kept the name of my restaurant called Orlando's. Yeah. I was thinking, what did I call myself now? God damn it. I said, you know what? Most of the guests know Chef Orlando. Let's yes. take to Orlando's. <laughs> but, but, but the point is actually is that in my doing what I'm doing, it is so important for me to connect with the locals. What Sufa as a community has done, as a, Sufa as a town has accomplished many awards. Let's just say for my restaurant, the man of, you've seen the stuff all across there, mm-hmm. a bunch of awards over there. Jay Mountain won a ton of awards. When I was at Ladera, we won a ton of awards. Sugar Beach has won a ton of awards. Otosh. But what has happened is not translated into the town. Yes. So what has happened, the, t- no, the community, sorry, the town understands and knows the value of the awards mm-hmm. and recognition. But the community have not seen it. They're right. not feeling it. If you drive through Sufa, you do not feel the, 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 mm-hmm. the, the, the passion or the, even the, the, the interest of the community that... You have all these awards. We have more awards in Sufa than any, than any community in St. Lucia. Mm. And yes, it's quite poor. And it's quite poor. It's quite poor by presentation standards. Mm-hmm. I, would, I always tell people that the definition of wealth isn't the clothes you're wearing, but the smile you're keeping. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of smiles in Sufa. They didn't want to competing with them, them. So they told me it had to be a certain distance from the resort. And so that turned out to be a restaurant right on the edge of town with a view of the cemetery. The cemetery. Symmetry has value if you understand the value of it. It is a, it is a lot of historical people oh, there. Nice. And so you can connect the, 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 the cemetery with the church. Yes. Um, you can you know, beautify the cemetery so it becomes a tourist destination. Yes. And, and recognize the people who have said, oh, I didn't know so and so was there or whatever. And so there's a, there's a missing, there's never missing stream of financial opportunity there. It's a well kept church. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think for. Sufa, I mean, most people are Catholic. So, you know, the church is a real good representation of the, mm-hmm. the community. But um, I think, um, I haven't been here for so long, I, I just found myself now submerging a few ideas. I'm seeing some, I mean, I know I've seen stuff before, but I've been saying for a long time, get this thing done, but no one's taking yeah. me on. Now I'm, just, I'm a minute, I'm now I'm a, I'm a counselor. Oh, okay, Orlando, what do you think? We discovered, by the way, that there are a lot of cemeteries right on the beach in St. Lucia. So today, that would be prime beachfront property, but there's a cemetery there. I guess in colonial times, the beach wasn't used that much, and they weren't going to, um, you know, spare the good farmland for a cemetery, because that was what was important back then. Anyway, the restaurant is really worth a visit. There's no set menu at Orlando's. You get whatever is fresh and locally available, so you could actually eat often at Orlando and not have the same menu each time. So there's lots of fruits and vegetables in a testing menu set of style where you get a bunch of little dishes and by the end of it you're so full. You can of course say you are vegetarian or whatever and they can adjust the menu for you. We had some great dishes like grilled guava with vegetables and lobster bisque and acra which is a local dish with sugar cane. Here is a beautiful beach town with a relaxed atmosphere that is different from the rest of uh, of St. Lucia. If you like this video, remember to click like, and if you want to see more travel and travel adjacent content, remember to click subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Bye bye.